Let's brainstorm every possible question. Let's brainstorm everything that's obvious about this. Let's look at everything we know to be true here. Let's look at facts. Let's look at surprises. Let's look at our prejudices. Like, what is it that we think we're certain about here, but we may be wrong? Mark Levy, thank you for joining me here on Mind Your Business. Thank you so much, Yitzhak. You know, I, of course, know you personally, and to everyone listening, Yitzhak is exactly the same off Thank you. Mike, if <laughs> Thank you, you. he's he's so the most enthusiastic. What's it like to go to the library with you or whatnot? <laughs> like with it, hey, do you have this book? You know, like with, I try to be polite. The most you know, enthusiastic we, guy I've ever seen. Thank so you. Like, Thank you. Well, you bring it out of me, so. <laughs> but thank you. Now, behind you, there's a great poster of also a mutual friend, Steve right. Cohn. Now, of course, in tonight's show, we're going to talk about the mechanics of your work. But let's talk about Steve for a second. Perhaps sure. we could jump in. My understanding is you, uh, uh, of course, Steve's one talented bundle of, uh, of, of, of meat and potatoes, you know, <laughs> He, he is. He's unbelievable. And we've had him on the show. Sure. But you created his brain. He's, again, the millionaire's magician, chamber magic. When he was here, he talked about going to London, and he went millionaire's magician, and then they wrote all the stories. Yeah, the millionaire magician was here. Talk about I, – that's why I would love to start with this, and then we'll start breaking it apart and explaining how people can start thinking about their personal brand, coming up with their idea – and then starting to run with it. So let's talk about Brother Steve Cohn. Sure. So about 21 years ago or so, Steve and I met, and I have a background as a magician, but I'm also, right, this differentiation expert. Mm -hmm. And Steve was saying, uh, you know, uh, like, I'm not standing out in the marketplace. I'm not getting the money that I want in order to do things, right? Uh, um, and he tried various uh, uh ploys in order to stand out. I remember one of them, and this is like just when Harry Potter was kind of becoming famous, but it was a little before Harry Potter. He would call himself a conjurer, like on his business card, and people would go, what's that? <laughs> like they were very confused, like we don't know what you are. And so what it is, is Steve hired me and I, I interviewed Steve, I watched his audiences, and interesting things that I saw, Steve went to Cornell, so he was a very sophisticated thinker, and he also grew up near Chappaqua, New York, which is a very moneyed area. Mm -hmm. So when he was a kid, he was performing for neighbors there, and they were all, like, a lot of them were rich. Let's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. play our cards mm -hmm. on the table. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, I thought, okay, that's a distinction that I don't see any other magician using. It's doing magic for the filthy rich, for the decadently rich. Like not just people with money, people who have lots of money and time and the discretion to spend it wherever they want. And right. so he knew how to perform for these groups. It's just he wasn't focusing on that. So I said, Steve, we're going to make you Steve Cohen, the millionaire's magician, entertainment for exclusive events. Um, you're going to need to change the way you dress. You need to dress in a very upscale way. We need to change the entire show, the type of tricks the millionaire's magician would do. You're only going to perform in the most upscale environments for the top 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 dollar if you get if someone offers you less than the top dollar you got to turn it down and so when i told steve about that 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 was the strategy immediately he talked to some people who he knew and everyone thought it was a terrible idea people said okay you're not going to have any friends they're going to think you're a snob and his publicist at the time, if you can believe this, right, the millionaire's magician, the publicist said, do you know how many millionaires there are in the country? There's only like X thousands. After we finish marketing to them, then who are we going to be marketing to? You're going to shoot yourself in the foot, if you can believe that. But 
So to continue the story, I coincidentally got a call from a guy who was putting on a business conference in in uh, like near San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And he had read my book, Accidental Genius. He wanted me to speak at his innovation conference. This was totally apropos of nothing, just out of, out of the blue. Mm-hmm. And so when I was speaking to him, he said to me, Mark, who are some of the people you're working with these days? And I talked about Steve Cohen as if he were the millionaire's magician. I didn't say people are telling him bad idea or whatnot. I said, oh, Steve Cohen, the millionaire's magician. And I started to talk about him and his show. And the guy from San Francisco with the innovation conference said, wait a minute, does this guy live uh, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan? And I said, yes, he does. How do you know that? And he said, you won't believe this. Yesterday, I got a call from this guy's publicist who told me all about him. And I remember thinking like this guy wanted me to have a magician perform at my innovation conference. And I remember thinking as he was speaking, why would I want a magician performing at my innovation conference? But, and here's what the guy said to me, but he didn't tell me he was the millionaire's magician. Do you think you can get me a call with him? What and a I story. instantly, as soon as we were finished with the call, I instantly called Steve and I told him the story. And he called his publicist and said, either you you run with the millionaire's magician or you're fired. By the way, so that uh, was 20 odd years ago. Uh, and since then, he <laughs> gets flown out by Warren Buffett, you know, like to Omaha to do shows and all kinds of stuff like Mark, that. Mark, what a story. And in fact, when you know this is radio it's great you know you have the everyone on the edge and when you said after you had that conversation with the with the one that's running the conference and you said uh right after i hung up the phone my next call was and i was thinking i know to the publicist you're fired (laughs) (laughs) i was saying to myself but yeah but you were polite enough to call steve first and say i think and you're right that publicist has to get it well, and let me say something about with the pub, like what the publicist said was, was so wrongheaded because being a millionaire or being rich or having the resources to help yourself and your family and the world, that's an aspirational goal too. Right. In other words, there's right. millionaires who have it already right. and there are people who want to be millionaires. Right. So like the fact that this guy made it seem like this very finite audience where there was no, you know, bleed over into other crowd, like that was just silly. Like that was silly. So in other words, anyone who's listening in business, you have your clients and you have your customers, but you also have people who aspirationally want what it is that you're selling. Mark, I I just got to ask you this question because this story that you shared really brings it home so powerfully. And that is when you know someone like yourself or someone in the creative space has an idea, whether it's, let's say, a marketing firm or presenting an idea, and we know, just like you, in your advice to Steve Cohn, the millionaire's magician, we're gonna, the millionaire's ma- magician, we're gonna run with that. And you had, you had the vision. It's in your head. You had the vision for it. I mean, look where he is today, unreal. And, 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 and like you said in the beginning, the publicist, and it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. In fact, Beth, I love. I spoke to Beth Comstock about the same issue. But now I want to pose it to you. How do you? Do you gain buy-in? How do you, uh, I'm not even going to ask how you deal with frustration. (laughs) Forget that. But how do you start to build buy-in from those that you see it so clearly, but, but, and, and, and your client may also potentially see it or is on the fence, like in the case of Steve, you know, again, over 20 years ago. But around him, you know, is surrounded by, we'll call them naysayers or people that just, you know, they, I won't say they're doom and gloom, but everything is they have to overthink. And then it's uh, paralysis by analysis. How are you going to prove that it's going to make money? And then what's the ROI right away and all that. But you have the vision. What's your, what's your suggestion to, to plow through that and make it happen? Well, uh, yeah, great question. One thing that I suggest is... Uh, is that people, when an idea or a strategy is 
is foisted upon them independently of themselves. Like, in other words, they didn't have a hand in the creation of it. They look upon that new thing as an invading virus to the body. You know, like they start to put it, push it away, you know, not made here. It must be awful. So as much as possible, I try to get people, the people who are going to be implementing, I get them involved in the creation of the idea or as much as possible, I try to get them involved in the implementation of the idea. That didn't happen in this like 21 right, years ago, right, this right, kind right. of thing, it was independent. But in general, you, uh, if people feel that they had a hand in the creation of something or a hand in making something work, then they want to see it work because it reflects on them. So I try to appeal to, uh, uh, by the way, another thing that I do related to that is that when I come up with an idea or we come up with an idea together, I'll often say, I'll often say just as a thought experiment, like let's pretend that this is definitely gonna work. How will we make it work? Like, how will we go out there and make it work? What are we going to be doing? Or I'll give my client homework about taking the idea. And uh, my homework to them is, I want you to go out and make it work. Like, I don't want you to think about the negatives. I don't want you, like none of that. I don't want you to think about any hesitancy on anything. Your job is to go make it work. So how are you going to do that and go out there and do it? Right. Like, so is that helpful? You want people to feel they have a hand in it and you want them to focus on it working and and acting and behaving into making it work rather than have doubts. By the way, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg. But as 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 my audience knows, we (laughs) we select guests that have great advice great strategic advice and are willing to share it. I mean, Mark shared such a critical point, and that is, and it applies for an executive or anyone that needs buy-in. Get your team involved early. Get them involved early. Don't just ram it down their throats. So you try to ramrod it, then, it, you know, it, 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 naturally you're going to have pushback and, and just not interested. But have them involved early. That's what basically Mark is saying. He has, he has it, the individual he builds the idea together with them and, and, and then along with the team. And I, I love that question also. Say, let's put aside, if it will, well, let's imagine that it does. How will we work it through? And guess what? What Mark is basically doing is stimulating the mind to like start to like, it isn't so scary. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's this is going to work. Now we just have to make sure, like, think about how we're going to make it work. (laughs) That's the way. Amazing. Now, uh, before we go to a commercial break, my understanding is that it's off limits, and therefore I'm not, you know, it's off limits to ask to name drop because you've got some amazing clients, which uh, I'm pretty sure we're not allowed to share, right? Uh, is Is that true? For uh, for confidentiality. For confidentiality, for, yeah. but but for those in the industry, he's got some of the biggest names: authors, public speakers. Uh, in fact, a um, a former White House official, uh, UN uh, a, a UN rep. I mean, these are the type of clients that Mark Levy has. Uh, Levy Innovation. You just uh, in fact, what's the website? LevyInnovation.com. That's L-E-V-Y as as innovation. No S at the end. I'm only able to come up with one innovation, I tell people. <laughs> Leave the innovation. And as we said at the beginning of the show, we are now back in the top 10 in New York AM radio. It's by having great guests with Mark Levy on. I'm probably going to go to number one. And we want to get to number one. He said, let's get Mark Levy on. He is the uh, one of the world's leading positioning consultants. He wrote the book, Accidental Genius. His website, levyinnovation.com, levyinnovation.com. He is a positioning and branding firm that helps consultants, individuals, and companies and uh, thought leaders increase their fees by, in some cases, over 2,000%. And how he does it, he's actually sharing some of the tricks on tonight's show, and we are so grateful that Mark was able to join us. Mark, thank you for joining me here on 710 WOR. We actually, uh, uh, Yitzchak, we want to get you 
above number one. Hey, thank you. You say number one, I, we want to take you further. Uh, Whatever. How is that possible? Is past one. That's what we want for you. <laughs> so thank you. And in the, in the first segment of the show, we talked about Steve Cohn, a, a, a dear friend of both of us, and an individual who, who Mark, and, and even Steve, we had Steve on the show, and he gave the credit to Mark for, for being able to see the vision. And therefore, my question now is, uh, as I turn to Mark, I say, ideation, how can an individual either on a company level or for their own, let's say they're a consultant, they are a thought leader, how can they inspire their brain to think up of the next big idea? Okay, so to try to think up a really big idea is daunting for anyone. Like it's especially one that you're going to be basing your career on or your business with all kinds of people working for you or whatnot. So if if it energizes you to think of it that way, that's great. But often what I do is in getting clients to think about big ideas, I first try to kind of calm them down. And one way I do that, I'll say, uh, uh, here's an example. And I use this even in brainstorms. It's this idea of, okay, if we had a really great idea, we'd be implementing it now, and but we don't. So rather than thinking about great ideas first, let's think up, in other words, rather than thinking about answers, solutions, let's first brainstorm every possible question that we have about the situation. So these are questions about what your business is, what you're selling, what are your products, what are your services, you know, what's your supply chain, who are your customers, you know, what are your customers interested in, your abilities, like just there's no question big or small off limits. So I'll give them like, let's say 10 or 15 minutes and I'll say, let's start shouting out questions that interest us. And by the way, we're not even writing these questions down. It's not that you're going to have to answer these questions, because if you had to answer the questions, that would be work. And you don't want to give yourself work. It, it would it would hold you back from answering questions. If you knew with every question, I'm going to have to answer it. It's more about warming you up and getting you to look at every part of the situation in a relaxed way. Because I find when people are trying to solve a problem or think up of a new idea, that they often don't look at certain parts of the situation because they're scared they won't have an answer. So they, they blind themselves to that part of the situation. And I don't want that. So I say to them, let's brainstorm every possible question about every single part of the situation. If you come across a question or two or three that interests you as we're brainstorming this, you can write it down. We may want to talk about it, but maybe not. But like, let's just go. Right. And so it's like throwing in the bullpen. You know, it's warming them up and looking at the entire the thing in its entirety, right? Does that make sense? This makes so much sense. In fact, I, I just have to give a teaser now because some of the uh, uh, suggestions and the you know, brilliant ideas that you just mentioned are going to make its way onto business class clips. That is a, a channel that we have on Instagram and on WhatsApp. On WhatsApp, if you want to join by WhatsApp, just text the word sign up to 718 594 6519. Thank you again for all the great feedback we get on that channel. On WhatsApp, sign up. Just text those words to 718 594 6519. On Instagram, just visit Business Class Clips on Instagram and just follow, and you'll automatically receive these. Some of the suggestions that Mark is, is sharing with us are going to become business class clips. And, you know, it's, it's so true. When someone has to think of an idea, then suddenly they're pressing. That's what you're sharing. Like, they're, they're pressing. So it's almost like, okay, let's, you know, perhaps you could even, let's talk about in a business setting where people are having a brainstorming session. And, 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 the, and you know, and everyone's sitting down and say, okay, we have uh, 20 minutes, a half hour to think of the next big idea. And everyone's sitting there and going like this. Mm. <laughs> right, right. Mm. Um, and, mm -hmm. like <laughs> what you've shared is how to like, I love how you said, first thing is take a deep breath, you right. know, chill, 
chill, all right? <laughs> chill, brother. <laughs> like, d- stop pressing. Don't think, oh, okay, I'm going to, I got, because that doesn't stimulate creative thinking. Right. Well, it's in uh, what you just said is, is just so right. Most of us, even the even the creatives among us, the majority of us, we don't have creative jobs or, or our, even if our job's creative, the majority of that job's not good. You know, there's invoicing, right. there's right, stuff right, like that. Right. Like it doesn't right. matter what you are. Right. And so asking people to be creative from a standstill is super difficult. Like, you know, they haven't been creative lately and they don't even have any tools. They don't understand how to be creative. And so you kind of want people warmed up. It's almost like you want the idea factory warmed up before you go into the brainstorm so that people are creative in there. And so one of the things I preach to clients is I talk to them about creating what I call a thinking campaign ahead of time. It's You sit there on your own, although you can uh, talk to some people. This is like before the brainstorming meeting. And you just think about what the project is. You're going to be brainstorming and who's involved. And you, (laughs) you journal about it to yourself. And an important part of these kind of thinking campaigns. So this is either whether you're trying to come up with an idea or you're on your own or you're in the brainstorm. So to me, we don't like to think up new ideas. Uh, we say that we do, but we really don't because it's difficult to do. And the new idea may be unlike what we've done before. So it's important that you give yourself exercises that are super simple to follow. And as long as you follow that idea, you'll come up with new ideas. Like if there's too much complexity, you won't do it or you'll do it badly. It'll shut you down. So the exercises I give myself or I give people in brainstorming sessions are things like what's everything surprising that we know about this situation or about this product or this service or this marketplace. It's like what's surprising about the marketplace. So that would be like five minutes or so or 10 minutes. Another question, I usually like to go in extremes. So it might be, I would actually begin rather than going with what's surprising about this, that would be second. The first thing I might ask is, tell me everything obvious about this. Because obvious, um, I, I think that comes from the world of therapy, like like gestalt therapy or so. It's like if people are stuck, they're stuck probably because they're trying to be too smart and too clever and they're trying to come up with solutions. So it's way better to say, let's put solutions off to the side. Let's brainstorm questions. Let's talk about everything obvious about this. Let's talk about everything that we know to be true about this. These are all separate exercises, right? That let's talk about everything that's true about this. Let's talk about, let's just talk about facts about this. Like, what are all the facts? Let's not get into judgments or anything like that. So you start to say what's obvious, what's factual, these kinds of things. And again, it relaxes you. I can't tell you how many times that I've worked with people on, oh, just tell me what's obvious about this. And they'll start to say things that are so simple. They'll say, you sure that this is, I'm not being too simple here. And I, no, 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 go ahead. Like, keep going. Like, what's obvious? That as they're talking about what's obvious or what they're talking about, what's factual, they instantly say, wait a minute. That gives me an idea. That's great. You know what I mean? Because they're so relaxed. They're immersing themselves in the situation, but not in a way that's tensing them up. It's relaxing them. So, right. So these individual exercises, let's brainstorm questions. Let's think about everything that's obvious. Let's think about everything about this that we know to be true. Let's think about everything we know about this that's surprising. Another way I go about doing this is I say, if we could have come up with good ideas, we would have already. So obviously we're not coming up with good ideas. Why don't we then just think about bad ideas? What are all the bad ideas about this, right? And then we start talking about different, for, like what ideas are just like super boring about this? Like so boring, it would put you to sleep. 
You know, like, and so all these things, right, are getting you to just look at the problem or the situation through one lens. And they're there to like kind of force you to come up with. So rather than saying, be creative, it's saying, tell me all the boring ideas. But you're being creative while coming up with the boring ideas. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Wow. What a show. What a show. <laughs> We're not done yet. We still have time. Wow. By the way, Marcus is a very surprising for someone this bright, is quite humble. I'm just going to jump in and say the obvious. For many people, it's a matter of contacting Mark. Because he's someone that can see, I mean, let's face it, we're all human and we're all carrying around our own mindset and biases and, 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 and the way we view ourselves. It probably takes, and I'm, I'm going to now put you on the spot here because, you know, listen, you're a brother and I've seen it. And again, I'm, I'm someone that's very close to you and have benefited from you. And I say, Mark, perhaps share some stories of people that that uh, you know, it's not their fault. I mean, you shared at the beginning of the show, Steve, who's a, a brilliant magician, but benefited by having you, not just an outsider, a, 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 a positioning consultant as an outsider to who then could look at them and say, you know what, I have your next idea. You know, as opposed to, we're, we're not saying no one could be creative on their own. Of course they can. But the benefit of having a positioning consultant, please feel free. D don't be humble now, please. Right. <laughs> well, thank you. I wasn't going to talk about this. but <laughs> And by the way, before I talk about, uh, uh, you know, like share a story, um, you talked about we all have prejudices. Yeah. Well, that would also be an example of one of these creativity exercises. So let's brainstorm every possible question. Let's brainstorm everything that's obvious about this. Let's look at everything we know to be true here. Let's look at facts. Let's look at surprises. Let's look at our prejudices. Like, what is it that we think we're certain about here, but we may be wrong? It may even take, it may even take a single idea or a single approach that you've been using in your business or in a product or service. And you may brainstorm, what are all the ways that we're wrong with this? Like this thing that we're selling, that we're basing everything on, mm -hmm. let's look at every pot. And we may need to be creative to come up with those ways. Right. And it's looking at all the ways we're wrong with it. Because again, looking at those ways might trigger something even better. Right. It's not to get you depressed. Right. It's to come up with something better. So you asked about um, like what would be an example of someone who I worked with uh, to differentiate. So uh, a, a client who I adore, Lisa McLeod, a bunch of years ago, uh, Lisa came to me and she was a sales trainer and, uh, you know, she was essentially training companies. She used to have been at Procter & Gamble. She was training companies on other people's sales methodology. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you would call her and, mm -hmm. and you'd say, I want to be trained on this methodology and she'd train you on it. Mm -hmm. And so in speaking to Lisa, like not only is she brilliant and impassioned, but but she cares deeply about the world, right? And, and so everyone listening for your own business, this relates to everyone. I'm telling mm -hmm. you Lisa's story, but this relates to everyone listening. So she cares deeply about the world. And in asking her questions about her life and questions about sales, she had said she was talking about like Thomas Jefferson and John Adams. She was talking about higher ideals. She also talked, she said, well, one thing that I want to do is, is I want to restore the nobility to the sales process. And I, uh, you know, I, that really struck me. Like I don't normally hear salespeople telling me about restoring the nobility of the sales process. Right. And anyway, we spoke over the course of a couple of days. And so I said to her, I said, okay, here, Lisa, you're not a sales trainer anymore. You're a consultant. You're an expert to executives, to sales executives. And you don't train them on other people's methodology. You train them on your methodology, which based on what she said, uh, I said, it's selling with noble purpose. Wow. 
That's your methodology. It's selling with noble purpose. And it's this idea of organizations that focus exclusively on the numbers always suffer and organizations that focus on higher ideals excel. And here's the backstory about how you came up with it. I won't go into, but there's a, a story behind it, like all these different things. And so from that, Lisa went to, she wrote the book Selling with Noble Purpose. She wrote the book Leading with Noble Purpose. Like suddenly everything started taking off for her because it was around the right idea. But a point that I wanted to make here to everyone listening is often what your differentiation should be or what your positioning should be. It's something you're already doing. You just have it in the wrong spot. You don't, you're not leading with it. You know, it's, it's, um, it's because your differentiation, um, people make snap judgments about who you are and what you're selling your products and services. They're making snap judgments. They're making those judgments very quickly, right? Snap judgments. And they're making them often without much deliberation. They're not sitting there and doing like taste tests and all kinds of things. They're making judgments very quickly about who you are and why you do what you do and how it could benefit them and how it might not benefit them, right? So what you need to lead with needs to be something that breaks the pe people's icy indifference to what you have to do. You lead with something. It doesn't have to be the totality of who you are and what you do, but you lead with that to get your foot in the door. Yet, like, and, and by the way, it's a true thing. I, I'm not telling you to lie or do anything. You're leading with something uh, um, that's true to who you are and that people out in the marketplace will talk about and then once they're interested in speaking with you, then you can bring all the other cool stuff that you have behind there. But you can't lead with everything at once because if you lead with everything at once, and by the way, most organizations lead with everything at once. Yeah. When you lead with everything at once, what you're doing is you're asking the marketplace to make meaning out of your life and your company. And the people are trying in the marketplace, they're trying to make meaning out of their own lives. They have no interest in helping you make meaning out of your life. You have to do it. You have to say, this is what we're about. This is what we represent in the world. And then you lead with that. Wow. And yeah. that takes time. So many other factors. Wow. Mind your business with the Successless right here on 710 WOR. My guest is none other than Mark Levy, one of the world's foremost positioning consultants. He wrote the book Accidental Genius. Uh, many, of his many of his notable clients include, uh, we'll stop right there. Not allowed to discuss that. <laughs> but <laughs> sorry, I don't want to get you scared. They're like, oh, where are you going with that? It's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. They are confidential, but they do include a, uh, a, a, a former speaker to the United Nations, a, a, the former department head at the, at the White House. Many, many notable uh, authors that are out there in the market today um, call Mark. Uh, you know, they, they they actually they called Mark years ago, and that's where they are where they are today. I think that's a that's a good way of putting it. Um, before I get to, to my final few questions here, because the clock is flying when I <laughs> when I have such an amazing guest on the on on the line, um, Stephen Gaffney. Stephen Gaffney got us in touch. What a great individual. He said, Yitzhak, I have someone, a real star for your show, Mark Levy. And then once I spoke to Mark, we hit it off in a second, literally, less than a second, a nanosecond. Right. <laughs> we hit off very quickly. Um, also, I want to mention that, of course, we are videoing this, and this will go up on our very popular YouTube channel. If you subscribe, you will automatically be notified when this entire episode goes up. On YouTube, we are at 710WOR, Mind Your Business. Again, on YouTube, 710WOR, Mind Your Business. And you click on subscribe, and you will automatically be notified when this entire episode goes live. Steve, in the previous segment, you talked about differentiate. Oh, I'm sorry? Mark. Mark. What? Steve. Oh, Steve. Because you were talking about <laughs> Stephen Steve, Gaffney. Stephen Gaffney. <laughs> Thank right, you. Right, right. <laughs> Now, you know what? That reminds, differentiation. Let's talk about being different from right. Steve. 
<laughs> so Steve's a great person, and we know his skill, you know, his set, uh, uh, what he brings. You know, I, by the way, I'm, I'm not sure if you were involved already in his, uh, you know, right? He is the world's number one uh, expert on truth and communications, and, you know, that's, uh, that's his whole thing. Great. Um, yeah. And, of course, a shout-out to Steve. we got to get him back on the show. Got to speak to the producer about that. Um, in the previous segment, Mark, we talked about differentiation. Differentiation is like one of those words that for some people it's a scary word. For some people it's almost benign, like, oh, differentiation. Okay, you know, all right. What does that mean? You know, like, <laughs> but can you describe why, you know, what it, what it means, not just the Merriam Webster uh, translation, but, you know, <laughs> the, right. the, the, what is differentiation and why it's so critical? For for a, you know for for an individual for a company to think along those lines in order to really break through and 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 have a a, a, a their own space in the marketplace. Sure. So uh, so differentiation is the idea that you or your product or your service or your company is going to be known for. So it's because right the the marketplace is super saturated with all kinds of competitors. Uh, direct competitors and kind of pseudo competitors off to the side. So there needs to be something that stands out for who you are so that people are interested in understanding more, right? So that's the whole, it's leading with a specific idea or a feature, or it's it's uh, something like that. It's leading with a reason why someone would do business with you, right? And I like to tell people that um, when it comes, I call your big idea, right? That's my that's my thing. And by the way, that's my differentiation. You know, Mark Levy helps you come up with your big idea. That's it. Like that's a demonstration. Because when I do that, people go, oh, that's interesting. Like, how do you do that? And when you come up with a big idea, when your business has a big idea that it rallies around, that you that you inhabit, it's usually, not always, but it's usually it's less about who you and your company are, and it's more about the impact that your audience is going to have in their own life after using your product or service or doing business with you, right? It's about how are they going to be different because they care more about themselves as well they should and the people in their circle they care than about you. So by focusing to, it's okay to focus on your own features and, and so forth, mm -hmm. but you really have to translate it in a very big way. People have to get something out of your big idea uh, in their own life. So to go back very quickly, I mean, here's a perfect example. Mm -hmm. your, big, your big idea, it needs to be something that people will talk about without you even being around. And so, for instance, at the top of the show, we talked about Steve Cohen, the millionaire's magician, mm -hmm. and his show Chamber Magic. So when, when Steve and I first created that show almost 21 years ago, um, we didn't have a lot of money. And so Steve would perform the magic tricks. And afterwards, I'd go into the audience and I'd speak to the audience about the tricks. I did it informally. I didn't say, mm -hmm. this is a focus group. I just said, oh, I'm with the show and I'm interested. What tricks did you like best or what trick did you like best? And the reason why I asked that is that the tricks needed to be double duty. The trick, each individual trick needed to be part of the show itself, but the tricks needed to be as emissaries for the show or missionaries for the show. They needed to go out into the world. They had to be so memorable and exciting that people wanted to speak about them even when they left the showroom or the theater. And so when I'd speak to people, if they talked about a trick, that was great. But if they never mentioned a trick, and I'm talking over a course of weeks or months, I don't mean like at any right, individual right. show. But if they didn't talk about something, Steve and I would pull that trick out of the show and try to make it more exciting or we'd substitute a new trick for it. And that's because the trick wasn't doing its job. It wasn't pulling its weight. It, what he, If they weren't going to talk to me about it then and there after having just seen it. They weren't going to tell their friends about it after. So it's essentially your big idea, even it's, though it's not a magic trick, right? You're not producing doves out of thin air or so. You're not doing something like that. <laughs> Nevertheless, to the right audience, it needs to be so exciting that they'll talk about it without you being around. You know, it's like 
like like having a noble purpose or you know like starting with why or any of these things like even if it's a product like there's got to be something about it that's so cool that your audience will do the marketing for you. You know, this reminds me of a, another mutual friend, a uh, star in NSA, Jay Bear. His book, oh, Talk, sure. Talk Triggers. Talk Triggers. That's, yeah. that's basically what his book is about. Do something so memorable that your crowd is going to talk about it. Right, right. Because you want them to market for you. And often the thing that they're going to talk about, the marketing they're going to do is is this is something we haven't talked about at all today, but it's the idea of if you're just in, if you're in service to your customer or to your market, even before they're your customer, if you're there to actually try and help them, even if you're not being remunerated for it at times or so, like that, not only are you helping people, which is wonderful, but that's the kind of thing that they talk about to their friends. A CEO who I can never, I've never found out who said this, but I read this somewhere on the internet like a dozen years ago and I've looked for them and I've never been able to find them. Okay. Some CEO of some company said, your marketing should be so good that it's confused with service. What a you line. Know, like, what a it, line. Right? In other words, getting word out about your company should be so helpful to people in their own lives that they just think that you're being a mensch. <laughs> you know what I mean? That you're being great. They don't even know. And it, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. It's not like you're doing something calculated. It's you're helping them. And you're doing it both to help them and to get word out. But they just think, Wow. You care about people. Like, it, it, like to me, that's a beautiful way to conduct wow. business. And, and that's how you package Lisa. When you're talking about Lisa, right. that's right along these lines. Right, right. It's right. not just about sales, putting out a product. And, and, and you know, so that leads me, and I know we're, we're running low on time, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm sure you're faced with this question all the time. Companies and executives and and, and, and and, sh and shareholders, stockholders, they're all about ROI, all about, you know, ROI, return on investment. Mark, mm -hmm. I, I love what you're saying. It's all nice, but show me, show me the guilt. <laughs> show me, show me the, <laughs> show me the guilt. <laughs> but how do you communicate to them? It's a, wait a second. It's a process. It's a ride. You have to build the narrative. You have to, and then you have to say it over. In fact, a great line from Beth Comstock. Strategy is a story well told. Strategy right. is a story. Beautifully they, put. Yeah. yeah, strategy is a story well told. You got to have a narrative and you have to say it out there over and over again. But meanwhile, you know, shareholders are like, all right, ROI, ROI. How, what's your answer when you get that pushback? Oh, from the R. Well, I mean, this uh, my answer is kind of prosaic and ordinary, but I show them lots of before and afters because, and this is for everyone listening. Often they'll just talk about the after, but if I don't know what the before was, then I don't know what the growth was. So it is essential that you have in talking about how your business has benefited the world and individual consumers, you've got to have a before picture and after picture for everything that you're talking about, right? That just, it, it's not a glamorous tactic, but it is, it, if something's standing in the way of you selling, that might be it. Wow. Folks, what a show. What a show. Yes, I know I'm going to get a lot of feedback on this one. And I, I always do. And I, I, listen, you know, I'm human also. I do appreciate it when I get the WhatsApps and the text messages and the phone calls and the emails and people stopping me at, at a bagel store and, and, and saying, yeah, it's like that was a great show. I know I'm going to get the feedback. Mark, before I let you go, before I let you go, perhaps you could share just a final tip, even though you've shared, <laughs> you've shared so much, a final tip for the listeners that they could like, you know, like, wow, just they, that, that could inspire them to be creative as they move forward in their lives. Sure. In, in thinking about how you might be different in your business, there's a technique that I didn't create, but I've used for decades. It's an elevator speech technique called, you know, how, when, 
And what you do, so this is for the listeners, I want you to think of different customers that you've had. And in order to find your differentiation, just describe them without mentioning them by name. It's like, oh, what do you do for a living? Well, you know how when a person will have this problem and then you talk about the problem or so at great length. So, and you keep on doing that for different customers. You know how, when, and you describe their situation in describing all their situations. And again, it's informal. You know how, when you do it over and over again, describing different people, your differentiation may appear in describing these different customers. I've had it happen many, many times. Wow. Man, the time flies. We're out of time, but a special thank you to Mark Levy, the one of the world's foremost positioning consultants. He wrote the book, Accidental Genius. You can find out more information and to reach out to Mark by visiting levyinnovation.com, levyinnovation.com. All this wraps up a great edition of Mind Your Business. Tune in again next Sunday night at 10 p.m. right here on 710 WOR for another great edition of Mind Your Business featuring business and marketing strategies to make you and your business successful. Have a successful week. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to this channel and be notified every single time a new video goes live. Don't miss out on any of the weekly interviews that I have with top business leaders, sometimes Fortune 500 executives. Hit subscribe and turn on notifications.